Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 5. This is video 1 of the second unit and this is all about thermochemistry. For this first video we're going to focus on energy, uh, what it is, the different types, and how it's transferred. So to start we're going to start with some vocabulary, uh, some definitions for you um, to really get into the thermochemistry. So to start we're going to look very general. Um, thermodynamics is what this chapter is actually about and thermodynamics is actually the study of energy transformations um, but we are going to focus on thermochemistry in this chapter and thermochemistry applies to the field of chemical reactions so we're going to focus on um, the study of heat in chemical reactions later in the year we're going to focus on um, more of thermodynamics so thermodynamics is actually from the Greek word, um, and it means heat and power. So energy. Um, we experience two different types of energy. So um, energy can be experienced two different ways. It can be experienced by work and by heat. So energy is the ability to do work or transfer heat. That's your definition. Um, work is actually the energy that is... Um, used to cause an object to move against a force. So work is the energy used to cause an object that has mass to move. Um, and to calculate work, we use W for work equals force times distance. And then the energy that is used to cause um, an object's temperature to rise, that is our heat. So energy can be experienced by doing work or by heating an object. So matter can possess energy in two different ways. Matter can either possess kinetic energy or potential energy. Um, so we experience energy through heat and through work, but an object can have either kinetic or potential energy. So kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So kinetic energy is the energy of motion. To calculate it, we have kinetic energy equals one-half mv squared. So m is mass, which is in kilograms. So again, m is mass in kilograms. v is velocity in meters per second. So kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. Um, any object has kinetic energy. So whether we're focusing on a baseball thrown at a Pirates game, or a molecule of water freezing, both of those have kinetic energy. You can see in this picture, um, as the bicyclist is moving down the hill, she's increasing her kinetic energy. She's increasing her energy of motion. And then potential energy is the energy that an object has because of its position or its chemical composition. So to calculate potential energy, we can use PE equals m times g times h. That's mass times gravity times height. Um, so potential energy is like the stored energy. That's what we can think about. So at the top of this hill, she has a lot of potential energy. right? Think she has a lot of potential at the top of the hill. Um, but what we will focus on is the potential energy that's related to molecules. So this potential energy we can think of is the stored energy from attractions and from repulsions. So the most important potential energy that we're going to look at, and we've actually looked at this before, is um, E electrostatic. So it's the electrostatic potential energy. And again, if you remember, this is K, which is the proportionality constant. Um, K is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th joules times meters per coulomb squared. Um, so again, units are kind of weird just to make sure that we get uh, the unit of joules that we need. And then Q1 and Q2 are the charges. Um, typically, it's close to the charge of an electron, um, but it's either positive or negative over the distance between the two nuclei. So we can look at this graph here and notice that when two like charges are close together, they have a high potential energy, right? It's greater than zero. Um, what that means is they're very likely to repel. So when you bring them really close together, they want to immediately repel. That's a high potential energy. Um, when we look at opposite charges, right? Opposite charges attract. 
So as you bring those two like charges together, it's actually not going to have as much potential energy because they actually want to attract. Now when we look at potential and kinetic energy, we can actually transfer that energy. So if we're looking, for example, at um, the ball on top of a wall. So the potential energy of this ball um, is very high when it's on top of the wall. Right? It has potential to fall, has potential to move. As the ball falls, right, its potential energy is being converted to kinetic. So at the top here we have a great potential energy, but it's not moving, so it has zero kinetic energy. Now as it's falling, we are now have more kinetic energy, and so that potential energy, right, the potential to fall back down to the ground, is starting to lower. So when the clay hits the ground, its kinetic energy is now zero because it's not moving. Um, and so what happens is the energy that was in this ball of clay, the kinetic and potential energy, is actually dissipated as heat um, and some work is done on it. So remember we experience energy as heat or as work. So all of that kinetic and potential energy that was within the ball of clay is either gone due to work or gone due to heat. So when we're focusing on energy, um, the SI unit, so the standard unit of energy, is the joule. And the joule is actually derived from um, mass and velocity. Right? So if you think about kinetic energy, it's mass times v, it's m times v squared, so kilograms times meters per second squared. So the joule is actually a kilogram times meter squared over second squared. Um, an older unit that's still used quite often is the calorie, a okay, lowercase c. Um, the calorie is used, and if we want to convert from calories to joules, okay, it's one calorie is 4.184 joules. Um, this is not the same calorie that we use in food. The food calories are the capital, capital C in calorie. That's equal to a thousand small calories, which is also equal to one kilocalorie. So you can think for food, that's actually a kilocalorie. So if you have to convert, it's important to remember this conversion. Really, it's important to remember both of these in case you, have, you do have to convert. So some more definitions as we're looking at energy um, is focusing on the system and the surroundings. So the system is what we want to focus on. It's what we want to study. So looking at this diagram, our system is actually the molecules that's inside the piston. Right, so here it's going to be the hydrogen and the oxygen molecules. The surroundings is everything else. Okay, so system is what we focus on, surroundings is everything else. Um, this is actually an example of a closed system because nothing can enter or leave because there's a lid. Right, so um, the cylinder um, and the piston create a closed system for these molecules. If there was no lid on this, that would be an open system, right? Matter could come in or could, could leave. So some more definitions, we have work. Um, I briefly talked about this, but again, energy used to move an object over some distance, so work is equal to force times distance, um, and a force is any push or pull that's exerted on the object. So if you push it or if you pull it, that's a force. Um, and so it's important to remember that you can do work if you are moving an object over some distance. So if I take this pencil and I pick it up and I move it somewhere else, I just did work on this pencil. Um, if you look at this example, work is done on the baseball by the pitcher because he's making the ball move some distance. And then heat. Um, heat is actually a measure of the kinetic energy of molecules. So heat is a measure of energy. Heat is not the same as temperature, right? Heat is energy. Um, so energy can be transferred as heat. Um, and it's important to remember that heat flows from warmer objects to cooler objects. So if you have um, you know, a container of hot water and cold water, um, heat's going to flow from warmer to cooler objects. When we're focusing on energy, um, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Okay, so just like mass, right? you can't just add mass out of nowhere. It's the same with energy. It's neither created nor destroyed. This is the first law of thermodynamics. 
It's also known as the law of conservation of energy. So the first law of thermodynamics says that energy must be conserved. So what that means is if your system loses energy, it's gained by the surroundings. If your system gains energy, it's lost from the surroundings. So it's always going to be transferred as work or as heat from system to surroundings. So an example um, is, again, with this bicyclist. A energy can be converted from one type to another. Um, up at the top, she has high potential energy. right? She has potential to move, um, but she has no kinetic because she's not moving. As she's going down the hill, her potential is decreasing. She's getting closer to the ground, um, but she's increasing motion, so, so she's increasing kinetic energy. Um, as she goes down the hill, potential is converted to kinetic. And then at the bottom, all of her potential energy is now kinetic energy. So energy can be converted from one thing to another. And in the next video, we're actually going to focus on how heat and work um, always make up the internal energy of something. So that is it for video one. Um, if you still have questions, please refer to 5.1 and 5.2 in your book. Um, hopefully that will help answer some questions. Um, you can fill in all of your notes, rewind, rewatch anything if needed. And then in class, we're going to focus on some specific examples.